should have a we should have a prepared speech tonight. And our first speaker has, is a recent member who joined Toastmasters. And congratulations. And her this is going to be her icebreaker speech. So without further ado, the first speaker for tonight will be Bethany. Okay, can everyone hear me? Okay. Well, greetings, Toastmasters and honored guests. My name is Bethany Jackson, and I'm a 24-year-old medical student. I'm currently in my second year, and I'm really excited to be here at Toastmasters to be able to learn how to become a more effective communicator and be able to house the skills needed for me to be a efficient physician. As you know, I'm currently in medical school and the whole medical training process is a long and arduous journey. You have to go through four years of college, you have to go through four years of medical school, and for my specialty of choice, urology, I have to spend an additional five years in residency. So it is a very long and hard journey to get there. I will need the various skills such as patience and the ability to communicate properly to be able to be a effective physician and to lead the future healthcare team. I know that I have years to learn these skills and it's a really good time for me to start here at Toastmasters doing so, taking the steps to be the best physician in the future. During the past summer, I realized that during research, I needed to be very effective when it came to giving presentations and showcasing my point of view when it came to various topics. During my time, I learned about healthcare disparities as it related to cancer patients. And I really want to be the individual who can speak up on these issues and be the voice for patients, especially those who are vulnerable and need the most help. I believe that patient advocacy, in addition to addressing the social determinants of health, is a very important thing, especially in medicine, and it's one of my current passions. I want to be able to improve the health outcomes of patients especially in individuals who may be under or uninsured. And I want to be able to impact lasting change within a leadership position. In order to do that, I need to be the person who has confidence, has the ability to lead the room in addition to being direct with my speeches and any type of communication. Originally, when I was younger, I wanted to be either a vet or be a astronaut. And as you guys know, I am originally from Huntsville, Alabama, which is known as Rocket City. And at this time, my parents really impressed upon me the abilities to really reach out beyond my limits and study the sciences and to be fearless whenever it came to going for my passions. And at this time in middle school, was when I really became really interested in learning about the medical sciences. I really loved going to the pediatrician. I know that some people absolutely hate going to a doctor, but for me as a child, I absolutely loved seeing the various gizmos and gadgets in the wall. I love seeing the stethoscope around my pediatrician's neck. And also I love seeing how everyone's so professional and had beautiful white coats and were able to help kids become healthy again. During this time, I also became interested in helping people and being more altruistic, especially when it came to working with people who may be different than me. So from there, I decided to go to the University of Alabama, Birmingham, UAB, and I pursued a bachelor's of science in biomedical sciences. And at this time, I was able to volunteer with various groups who were underinsured and had limited access to care. I wanted to be able to help these individuals receive care and be able to have the access to various health conditions or various treatments for the health conditions and do so by being compassionate in addition to understanding their various needs and their specific special circumstances. 
whenever I look at healthcare, I see every single patient as having a story and everyone's story is shaped by their environment, their circumstances. So medicine isn't just a hard science. We have to be able to really understand where these people are coming from and how to help them get to where they need to be in the future. Everyone's story is like a puzzle. And by being a physician, you kind of have to be the detective and solve all the different mysteries and put all the different pieces, parts together to understand how this patient is doing currently and how to help them get to a better state. With various pieces, parts making up a patient's history, you need to really be aware of the various determinants that make it harder or easier for them to have access to care because some patients live far away from healthcare facilities. Some patients don't have good insurance or they have no insurance. So for them, it's harder for them to receive the access to care that they need. As a future physician, I want to be able to be a leader in addressing these health disparities and also helping various nonprofit organizations by lending my services and providing low cost care for patients that need it. I want patients to be able to put their trust in me and to be able to understand that I am a reputable and also a confident individual who is able to provide these care, especially for people who are at their most vulnerable times, being sick and needing the most help. And at this time, I conclude my speech. Thank you. All right, thank you, Bethany. At this time, we will go to the second part of our program. Since I don't think there is a second prepared speech tonight, so we're going to go to our table topics sec session. And our table topics master for tonight will be Olivia. Good evening, everyone. And I am indeed your table topics master. I just want to say what synergy between the need to help people and your desire to enjoy just even as a kid going to the doctor. You're right. Most Kids do not like going to the doctor, Bethany, but yeah, I too was intrigued by the stethoscope and the white lab jackets and why they were always so gleaming white. How did they keep them so clean? I still have not figured it out. But anyway, they're always so gleaming white. I could think, I just always thought that they got a new coat like every day or something. You have to keep like a tied pin with you. This gets you the same. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. All right, so thank you for your speech. I enjoyed it. And now here comes my favorite part. And the reason why it's my favorite part tonight more so than ever is because fall is my favorite season. So uh, my first question is, fall is my favorite time of the year. What's yours? Anybody can answer. What's yours and why? Okay, Carrie. Oh, was Donovan, did your hand go up first? I'm sorry, my apologies. Carrie, it's all yours. Good evening, everyone. Fall is my most favorite season of the year as well. Yay! The reason is, number one reason is that's the reward. Cool down after the hard, hot, steam summer in Mobile. I feel like I, I patient be tough and the finally cool fall is a reward second reason i love autumn view greenery a lot of greens in mobile because we had a lot of rain beautiful green but those turn to yellow orange red the beautiful autumn color unfortunately we don't have mountains around here we don't have hills when we when, when I went to up to Asheville, North Carolina, that in fall, that was a beautiful. Also, I went to Oregon in fall and beautiful. There are beautiful, beautiful mountains, hills, and beautiful autumn view. I love, I love, I love fall. I, I discussed with season with my father. I remember he said, Kiri, I think we don't need a summer and a winter. All we need is spring and fall. I do agree. I do agree. 
We don't need an extreme hot season. We don't need an extremely cold season either. We just perfectly between hot summer and cold winter. That's the autumn and the spring, especially fall. Autumn is my favorite season of the year. Thank you. Thank you, Kaori, and I agree. It is actually the changing of the leaves is one of the things that I admire the most. And no, we don't get to see all the beautiful changes, but when I spent some winter months in Canada, in Quebec, oh my goodness, I was there at the perfect time. I saw every color imaginable from real, real dark purples all the way to the lightest, faintest pinks and yellows, and it was just beautiful. My next question is, someone, aside from what Carrie has talked about, tell me one thing that you love about the fall. Just one thing that you love about fall. Something that just gets you excited about the fall. Go ahead, Caleb. Uh, thank you, Olivia. The one, I, I actually believe Carrie already mentioned this and I raised my hand about thinking. But the one thing about fall that I love and something that was really reinforced this past week is the temperatures dropping to absolute just livable levels. Uh, the last week I spent my time in Northern Scotland, which was, I think on average 17 or 18 degrees Celsius, which is 68 to 70 in Fahrenheit. And it was beautiful. And then the very first day I came back, I flew into Atlanta and it was 98. And I remembered why the South is so painful. And now I'm sitting in my apartment and it's burning up in here too. So I'm counting down the days for the temperatures to drop <clears throat> uh, even further. And Something else I really love about the fall that I don't think was mentioned is fall is the perfect time for all the fall flavored drinks and <clears throat> a, a favorite of mine, and this might be, excuse me, this might be embarrassing, but I absolutely love the pumpkin spice drinks, all pumpkin spice drinks. My absolute favorite was a pumpkin beer named Sarnak which is, it only comes out around October. And I would just get growler after growler of that with my friends back in the day. But that is my answer and back to you, Olivia. Thank you very much, Caleb. And we, I forgot that you were out of the country. I'm glad that you made it there safely and back, glad to have you. My next question is, why is autumn also referred to as fall in the US? Why is autumn also referred to as fall? Just take a guess. Go ahead, Donovan, take it away. Thank you, Olivia. Autumn guests and, and, and members. My question that Olivia asked was, why, what does, why does autumn also called fall? I would probably have to say that the reason why it's considered as fall is because when you look outside, you see trees and you know what's on trees is leaves. So technically, fall indicates the changing of colors of the leaves, but also that it also makes it makes the leaves fall. That's why it's called the season of fall. That's one thing that I I um believe that is my answer to her question and, uh, and I want to um, answer the other question. The one thing that excites me about fall is because it's the um, song of the boys of fall 
which kind of reminds me of football and it's just it's just the perfect time to listen to that song. As you can see, leaves falling on the ground. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Donovan. According to Britannica, autumn is the season of the year between summer and winter, during which temperatures gradually decrease. It is often called fall in the United States because leaves fall from the trees at that time. Very good. Thank you very much for that, Donovan. Okay, so we know that autumn is called fall, but there is another name that actually predates autumn. Who can think of a name for the season of fall or the season of autumn that predates those two names? There's another name. Summer and winter have been around for over a thousand years, those names. Spring and fall are relatively new. There is a name for this time of the year, and you're gonna, I'll give you a hint. It would be what the pilgrims were doing this time of year. I gave you a hint. What's the name that predates the name fall or autumn and represents the time of year that we're in right now? Okay, we'll move on to the next question at the end. Oh, go ahead, Caleb. I think Caleb has the answer. Thank you, Olivia. Um, hopefully I have the answer. I, I believe it would be called harvest season as this is the... <laughs> This is the time of year in which crops would be harvested traditionally and likely still harvest today. I'm actually really excited because all of the squashes and pumpkins are being released and brought into the stores and I'm getting ready to do my fall decorating as soon as I get my apartment cleaned up. Just as I'm sure you all can see, it's a, a catastrophe from traveling, but thank you. Very good, that is that isn't the, the season that we're in, harvest season. And I agree with you. It is one of my favorite time of seasons for the different foods. Although I always miss those summer fruits like pineapple and watermelon and all those strawberries and fresh cherries. Oh, my absolute favorites, favorites. But I do enjoy the fall harvest and all the corn and the pumpkins and squash and all those things as well. If, if fall is not your favorite season, and I don't know why it wouldn't be, but if fall is not your favorite season, tell me which one it is and why. Which one is your favorite season and why? If fall is not your favorite, which one is and why? Okay, Donovan. Thank you, Olivia. Even though I do enjoy fall, it's not the best, the best season right now because it's the peak of hurricane season. And personally, I don't like hurricanes because it's very, very stressful time of the year because you always think that you're going to get hit. So far, we have not been hit yet, but in due time, we probably will, but that's the one thing that I don't really like about fall. And the thing, so what I can't wait for is the season after, after completely after hurricane season is over. Because that's not my favorite time, the one, Thing I do like about the fall is the harvest moon, actually, which, you know, again, what Olivia said, it predates to the, the harvest season, as Caleb mentioned. The, I guess the other season that I enjoy is winter. No, it's actually summer and winter, actually. Those are my two other favorites. Because summer, the reason why I like summer is because even though it's completely hot, you still can cool down with ice cream and lemonade. Who doesn't like that? And for winter, is that you can just cozy up on a 
to the file. Um, you can drink some hot cocoa. You can uh, make s'mores and all that fun stuff. And that's my answer of why, of what my favorite um, season is and what it's not. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Donovan. What synergy you brought to that answer? Seasons coinciding with the weather and unfortunately, especially in the South, you are so correct. This time of year does bring about the risk of those dreaded hurricanes and tropical weather and just all the things that come along with it, living here in the South and on the Gulf Coast. I have a question for you, David. What is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of autumn? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Don't think, just give it to me. The first thing that comes to my mind when I think of autumn is cooler weather. Because by the time we get into September and October, and I think Thursday is actually officially the first day of autumn, I am so sick of the heat and the humidity of living down here. And part of that's probably because I'm getting older and I'm doing, I, I do I help out my dad. I cut his yard and, and handle my yard. And, and the summertime is just so exhausting sometimes for me. So the first thing I think of is, is definitely the cooler weather and drier weather. But beyond that, Autumn or fall is such a special time. I, I love that season. I think Halloween is one of my favorite holidays, just because as a kid, I loved the just the mystery, mystery about it and how fun it was to dress up. I remember my dad, my kitty cat's watching me speak. I remember my dad would um, take me around the block trick-or-treating, and it was just so exciting. And the and the weather when I'm wearing my little outfit would be cool and crisp. And it's just something special about this time of year. And, and I enjoy the cold weather too, at least down here, because we don't have severe cold weather for the most part. So I, I look forward to that coming up. And then the spring is nice and I don't have to deal with the summer again for until summer. So that's, that's how I feel about fall. And that's my first thought that comes to mind with a little follow-up. And thank you for the question, Olivia, and back to you. Thank you very much, David. And I must agree with you again, um, as with everyone else, that yes, it does mean cooler weather. And fortunately for you and I, because I have a huge yard that um, always seems to just catch us by surprise. And I just, nothing, I love more than to see the grass stop growing, just cease to grow, turn brown. I don't care. Just stop growing just for a little while, please. Okay, I have a question for you, Maurice, because I know you've been dying to answer this. Fall is the official for me kickoff. And I know this is way too early and that's what the question is. It's the official kickoff for the hollow holiday season. Is fall an official kickoff for you, Maurice, or do you run away from it and just hope that it stays away until November? Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, is the fall season or the beginning of fall season the kickoff for me for holiday season? My answer to that is no. And my kickoff will probably be, for me, is right, I guess, maybe a week or two before Thanksgiving. That's my kickoff. And I don't really think about anything much between the beginning of the fall and Thanksgiving. So that is my kickoff of the holiday season. I don't want to go too far back because I know the commercial industry that the stores and stuff, they want to go back, they, they would like to go back as far as they can. I think it's, I think it's before Halloween now, isn't it? <laughs> so again, that's my kickoff. And then another, another point for fall in general is 
you know, I guess as David said, I'll just take I'll just take a quote from him. You know, there's a synergy between me and the coolness and the crispness of fall. Back to you, topics, Master. Very good, very good. I, I, the time is now seven twenty-three. Toastmaster Maurice, would you like me to turn this back over to the next portion of the meeting now? Yes. Okay. This concludes our portion of the table topics portion. This concludes our table topics portion of the meeting. I truly enjoyed it. Typically, most importantly, is because fall is indeed my favorite season, and it just reminds me of everything sugar and spice and everything nice. So I'm excited to be here, but I will pass the meeting back to you, Maurice uh, Toastmaster, for the evening. All right. Thank you. At this time, we will go into the third portion of the meeting, which is the evaluation period, and our general evaluator for tonight is David. Thank you, Maurice, and good evening again, everyone. I am your general evaluator for this evening, and I think we will start with the evaluation of Bethany's icebreaker speech, which I am also the evaluator. So I will now switch to the evaluator role. I, I'll, I'll email you my evaluation, Bethany, after I finish after the meeting. But I would say if you've seen the evaluation form, we have like general comments and I'll start with that. It asks what you excelled at. And, well, first, let me say that I, I really think seriously, that was a very, very good icebreaker speech, a very good first speech, because it's difficult to do a public speech in front of people that you've never done one before. And you were very composed and, and very you did a very, very good job. And I really love your, you talked about helping people and working in the medical field. And, and I remember you talked about how you looked at things as a puzzle or a mystery. And I love that because that's, my field's completely different. I'm in engineering, but, but that's what I love about engineering. Finding something that's a puzzle and having to figure it out is just so satisfying to do. So I, I could see that as well being a big part of the medical industry. I put that first, I, I, I did not detect any filler words, which is really remarkable for first speech. I think you worked hard on that. And there was also some effective use of having some silent pauses, which is great because that's the hardest thing for a lot of people to do in speaking is to have that moment of silence where you're gathering your thoughts because people want to say, um, or, you know, it's, it, and you, but you you were dead silent while, as you gathered your thoughts for the next phase, and, and that was very effective. And also, as I said, you you really conveyed your passion for the your career, not just I'm going to go doing this and I'm going to specialize in urology, but the reasons behind it, wanting to help people, which was, and that's what speaking's all about because it's easy to just say I'm doing this and this and this, but the reasons behind it and. and you know, and the passion, that's what people I think are interested in. And, and you did convey that very well. The second part of the general comments are things you may want to work on. The only thing I really put, especially considering this is a first speech, and when we're on Zoom, it's a little tricky, but I said you might want to position your camera view a little better because I, I could tell you were gesturing a good bit and I could see them, but they were some of the gestures were kind of kind of like me here. They were just a little I couldn't quite so so just or just kind of watch while you're talking to see see where your hands are going. But it but it was good use of gesturing, which I wanted to point out as well, because gesturing is a great and important thing. And as far as challenging yourself. The only thing I really put was to keep giving speeches and to try to kind of let go and feel a little more relaxed as, as you progress along, because it was, I think everybody, especially the first speech, there's a certain nervousness or, and, but, but you really did very well with it. I mean, seriously, that was very good. And I won't, I'll send you, uh, we have also, which you've probably seen in the evaluation, the seven different criteria we judge on. And I think overall, well, just real quickly, the clarity, I, I had a four, your your voice was very clear and concise. The vocal variety, I had a two, and that's something we all struggle with, vocal variety. 
it, but it, it's, but, but it was, it was a really, still really, really good. And eye contact is really hard to say on Zoom, but, but you definitely were looking at the camera. So I had a four on that and three for gestures and a three for audience awareness. Although I thought you did good with that. And a comfort level, I put a two, which is emerging, which, but you, you were, I mean, for a first speech, it's quite, quite good. And then interest, I had a five that it was very interesting and, and definitely conveyed that. And that, so, so and congratulations on, on your first speech and, and please continue. It, it's really, it's remarkable the, how much more confident I got as I went on. It's definitely a great thing to help with, with careers and things. And that concludes my, portion of the speech as, as evaluator. I've gone over, which you did not go over. You did it just right at six minutes. So, so that was very good too. So now moving on, I believe we have a timer's report, which is, is Maurice the timer for this evening? Yes. All right, thank you, David. The timer's report for this evening. Uh, Beth's speech, and I did start about I estimated a half minute late, so I I, I got five fifty three, but he said six minutes, so we were uh, I was a, I was about off, so around five fifty five to six minutes on Beth's speech. Yeah, just under six minutes, definitely. Okay, just, okay, just six. Okay, and Carrie's table topic was one minute thirty seven seconds. Caleb's first table topic was one minute forty nine seconds. Donovan's first table topic was one minute, 39 seconds. Caleb's second table topic was 33 seconds. Donovan's second table topic was two minutes and four seconds. David's table topic was a minute and 41 seconds. And my table topic was a minute and 13 seconds. And then David's evaluation of Bethany's speech was four minutes and 28 seconds. And that is the timer's report for the evening. Thank you, Maurice. And moving on, I believe next, I believe Carrie is our awe counter and grammarian this evening. So if you could give us those reports, please, Carrie. Good evening again. Let me start a grammar uh, tonight. Today's word synergy. I believe Olivia wants, Maurice wants. Anybody use? If I'm wrong, please correct me. I used it three times. Three times, actually? OK, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like Olivia used it three times. I'm sorry. <laughs> OK. <Thanks>. Uh, <laughs> I was excited about it, too. <laughs> I'll yeah, tell you I'll a little trick. I'll tell you a little trick that I used, and I was going to mention it but I'll just say it real quickly that okay. if you keep your, chat, keep your chat box open and you're always looking at it. So I just kept the chat box open and I could always see the word right there in my face. So I kept looking at the definition and the sentence and I was excited to use it over and over again. Synergy, synergy. Okay, got it. <laughs> okay. Officially, Olivia used three times. <laughs> Bethany. Your first speech, long speech, you did very well. I, I found out if it, different people have different habits. And I found that your habit, when you are a little nervous, you overuse and. It's so maybe that's what you want to focus on. But in the so first half, I hear the and, and kind of over, uh, you overused. The second half, you look more relaxing, get nerve, uh, relaxing and get used to the, the atmosphere speech. And I hear this and I detected two shows you could avoid. But you did very well. I really like it. Thank you. Kayla, first speech. I heard so. So and but those words we sometimes very appropriately use, sometimes we could avoid. And I when I say so, but the, those words you could avoid. So you use so once, two and. Second speech, you use but one, one but. And plus, when you coughing or snoozing or whatever happened middle of the speech, just, just 
ignore. I don't need to say sorry or excuse me or anything. Just, just move on and continue your speech. Donovan, your first speech, I didn't detect any filler words. Very good. Your second speech, you I heard so twice, you know, once. Baby, your your short speech. I heard so twice and twice. And your cats took off your focus, I guess. <laughs> your evaluation. I heard four so's and four and and Marie, I heard two so's or I heard twice so you know one. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you, Carrie, for the all counter and grammarian report. I believe that concludes all of our sub reports for this meeting so I can give a general evaluation before we move on and the meeting we did have to take a five minute recess to get things set up it would be great and I'm guilty of this too if we could all get on just a little bit earlier so we have time just to clarify any roles and, and get started on time I think we all participated we all took on roles and we all participated in the table topics so that's that's great. I think you know, participation, especially in a small group, is is really important for me to have everyone be an active participant, and we accomplished that. And I think everybody had a good time. That's the other thing too. Is it's good to this should be serious, and we're working on our yeah. That's my cat. Our communication skills, and but we need to have fun as well. So so that that's important, and I think especially with the um, table topics about the fall. That was great um, to help help with that. And I think that's my general overview for the meeting. And I will turn the meeting back over to our Toastmaster, Maurice. All right, thank you, David. Okay, we don't have an educational overview for tonight and we don't have any awards for, for tonight. So at this time, I will end the recording and then we will just have any, uh, any comments from anyone about the next meeting or anything in the future. <laughs>